pick the most valuable. Hi, Jackie, how are you? So she's a Barbie brunette, and I'm looking at the back to see a couple of things. Don't think I'm naughty now. <laughs> I want to see her 55, 6, 7, 8. So 1958. Patent is pending here. She does not have bendable knees. See her knees? They don't bend. That doesn't happen till later. She does have what is a hole in both earrings, but ears, but no earrings. She's got the blue makeup, and she's got a ponytail, and she's a brunette. Most of them, of course, are blondes, right? Early ones, they're gonna be a little bit different. The German doll that she was modeled after was actually a brunette as well, the Bill doll from Germany. This one, how did you acquire this one? Where are you, honey? Oh, there you are. Your mother gave it to you when you were a child? Okay. She's nice. Does she have shoes? Is this the only outfit you've got? Do you have other outfits? Do they have a black, black and white stripe, typical swimming suit for her early on? Do you have the Barbie label inside? The Barbie label is very important for value. Yeah. Okay. So in the swimming suit, which is the most valuable of the, of the outfits that you have compared to this outfit, if you put her in the swimming suit, with the Barbie label, the swimming suit's worth about $10. This Barbie is worth about $75. Nice. You're welcome. Speaking of dolls, the American Girl dolls. Carrie, I've talked about these and written about these and researched these a lot. Carrie, how are you? How'd you acquire her? We're going to get you a microphone. What's her name? Molly. This is Molly. <laughs> Molly is one of the three original American Girl dolls, Samantha and Molly. Molly is, of course, uh, your doll of a particular time period, right? You know which time period. Which one is it? She's World War II. She's very popular. Grandpa would buy these from the Pleasant Company that introduces these dolls in the late 20th century, and these dolls become sort of the Barbies of the age, right? They become the most collectible dolls. You get a little storybook about that time period, and they're historical. They're terrific. Some of them go as high as $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 for one. Why did you bring this here today at my table? You thought, could mine be the ones Dr. Laurie's talking about? Why? Why don't you think so? You never think it's you. You always think it's that other person. You never think it's you. Why can't it be you? Why can't you be the one with the $2,000 doll? It never is. Why? <laughs> it never is. I'm a big TV star. Look at these hips. It could happen. <laughs> All right. Here's what we've got. This particular piece is in good condition. They had to be in pristine condition. Do you have the storybook? Do you have the box? Okay, I don't have the box. We decreased value 20% without the box. You have the set of books, and she's one. And this one of the books is about her. Okay, you've got the, the later set, all six about her. Okay, by the Pleasant Company, relatively nice. When did you when did you get her for Christmas? What year was it? The 90s. 9091. Okay, so you got one of the early ones for the most part. Condition is good, not excellent, not pristine. Do you have pets in the house? Pets. She's been in a box, so this cat hair didn't come from there, right? Came from somewhere else. The pets, you gotta go easy on the pets, people, right? But we love our pets. Who's the guy, he's laughing, he's like, oh, laughing, he can't believe I said that about the pets. I know, you all love the pets. I love the pets, too. But I have fish, they're cleaner. <laughs> Value on this particular doll is just about $350. That's not bad, <laughs> right? She has all of her outfit. Her hair is in good condition. You haven't done something crazy like, you know, you know, put Clairol rinse in it and made her a blonde, you know, but nice. They're very desirable and collectible with who? Millennials, right? Because again, that's the dolls of their age. Nice. Hi, Donna. How are you? How'd you acquire G.I. Joe? It's your husband? Pawtucket, Rhode Island, Hassenfeld Brothers, G.I. Joe. You've got the original doll. Oh, I forgot his hat with his hat. <laughs> You've got the original information booklet. 
about G.I. Joe, and he's a movable action figure and all the authentic stuff you can buy. And you've got the box, and you've got the instructions for the removal of his boots. <laughs> Paint, point the toe down and pull down away, and the boot will slide off the foot. Let's see. Point it down, and it'll slide off the foot. It should. Maybe it will. We're not too sure. Oh my gosh, here it goes. With his foot. <laughs> his foot is still in the boot. His hat just fell off. G.I. Joe is having some problems. <laughs> he is old. I can't get my boots off either. All right, let me get this hat. The prototype for G.I. Joe sold for $250,000. You think you got that? You're like, let's hope. I think I got that, Dr. Lori. I think I've got the prototype. Even with the broken ankle, <laughs> I've got the prototype. You've got a typical G.I. Joe doll. That doll retails today on the vintage market, in the toy market, which is very emotional. People want their old toys back. Value on that piece, about $85. Nice. And the foot is back together now. <laughs> Look at the Cabbage Patch doll. Do you collect a lot, Melanie? He has postcards. Why am I undressing your Cabbage Patch doll? <laughs> oh, you've got some, you got a diaper on this Cabbage Patch doll. Do you have the certificate that goes with the birth certificate, the adoption certificate for the Cabbage Patch doll? Do you have the box? Oh, the box, no. No, you don't have the box. Do you have the certificate? They came with a certificate, right? They came with a certificate, and basically it says, you know, she's my Cabbage Patch doll, and she's born on this day, and this kind of thing. Okay. You don't have that? No. Okay. This particular, it's okay if you don't have it. This particular doll is in very good condition. All of the hair kind of looks like a rug. You know when you did rug hooking in the 70s? You weren't here in the 70s, but it's okay. <laughs> you did rug hooking, it kind of looks like that. There's no odor to the doll, it's in good condition. It still has all of its... Um, Digits actually identified, sewn in, and value on the 1970s Cabbage Patch doll is about $75 in this condition. This, sweetheart, is beautiful. Someone did a nice job crocheting it, but not the original outfit. So if you have the original accessories, clothes and such, you want to keep them together, the box will also increase value by about 5 to 10%. Thank you, hon. This beanie baby. Here he is. All right. So here's the tag, the Beanie Baby people, right? Warner, Ty Warner, says, uh, made in Oak Brook, Illinois, made in Gasport, Hampshire, England, and also in Canada, Ontario, Jake. From 1997, he's Jake the Drake Duck. He has a tush tag. This is a hang tag or a heart tag. This is a tush tag, it's near their tush. It has his name. It says 1998. So the tush tag is a different date from the hang tag. This date is different from this date, okay? So they come up with the idea in 1997. They don't manufacture this one until 1998. You got me? Where are you? Hi, honey, okay. And then it says he has PE pellets. He doesn't have a smell, no odor to him, but he has PE pellets, not PVC pellets, right? He's in fair condition. Really, Dr. Lori, fair condition? Yeah, he's in fair condition. And why is that? Because if you look at this curve right here, it looks like those PE pellets are deteriorating. So that little curve is happening. Um, now, time period for him and value on him? Value, about $45 retail for him. Um, on the secondary market, you could probably command $45. If you sold it at auction, you'll get half. All the values I'm giving you today are retail values based on a sales record where a similar piece has sold. When you're thinking about Beanie Babies, here's what I want you to remember. No odor. It has to have a good, strong foundation of the pellets. The stuffing has to be pretty good. It won't be stuffed a lot. It'll only be stuffed a little bit because the idea was that they can move, right, and model the toys so kids could play with them so they don't want them stuffed really hard. And then the other thing is coloration of the stuffed animal fiber. So you want to make sure that the colors are still strong. This is nice because it has a strong color in the tail and it still matches the head. What's also nice is if you'll notice you put up both wings here, you can see that the color here is still in good condition. If you look at the back, 
you can see that the under color has actually faded and changed a little bit from being on top of the gray. So look for coloration and look for, of course, attached tags. The tag, the tag has got to be attached. So if you just have the tag hanging around, you want to be careful of that. Company, and they told you that maybe it's the only one with green pants. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, Rhonda. Where are you? Tell me about this. I love these stories. This is all the crap that I've got to wade through. <laughs> right? Oh, Mickey Mouse's hands have to be yellow to be valuable. You have to have a, you know, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So this company, John Wright, who made these dolls, and here it is, with the tag that's not attached, so I'm gonna put it back in his pants. <laughs> it's got some corduroy pants, and this particular piece, you're saying, all right, we've got this, and you call the company. They are handmade in terms of the felt, right? So this particular piece, you acquired how? Okay. So you got it at an auction, and then what happened? You got curious and you started calling people. Laid around the house for a few years. And you looked them up online. What else did you find? What made you call the company? Like, I don't have extra time to be calling companies. Now, I wouldn't call the company, but in your every day, you're like, one day you wake up and say, I'm calling the company about this. So you took them to a doll show. And a lady offered you $700, so then you thought, oh, don't sell it, don't sell it. So you didn't. How long ago was that? Two years ago, some lady, who knows who it was, maybe she had, nothing, she had no knowledge of dolls, but just decided that it looked like her husband and wanted it. I don't know. I don't know. And she said, I'll give you 700 bucks. So you thought, oh, 700 bucks, wow, that's something. Could it be that that woman had lots of these types of dolls in her inventory and wanted to jack up the price and have you go around and help her be what are called online mavens, running around saying, wow, it's worth a lot, it's worth a lot, I'm going to go to a lot of people, it's worth a lot. Could that be possible? Do you think appraisers or dealers do that? Do you? They do that all the time. They do it on TV, they do it in a lot of places. This is why an appraiser can't also be a buyer or seller. They have to appraise only. So she makes you a purchase offer. Usually they're gonna make you a low purchase offer. Usually it's 10% of what, they, what it's actually worth. They're willing to take, give you 10%, which would mean that this piece is worth $7,000. You think that's the case? You were told by somebody else, 1,200, 1,800, who also is, we know nothing about their background. Anybody who walks around and wants to be an appraiser can be. What do you mean? There's no licensing body for appraisers. You have a real estate appraiser, they can't buy a house, they can't sell a house. They can't list your house. Personal property appraisers, antique appraisers, they don't have to have any license. They could just open up a yellow pages, open up a website and say, I'm an appraiser and start appraising. Now what? You believe the 700 is too low, you do believe the 1200 is correct. Then you called the company, is that true? Okay, what did the company tell you? Don't sell it for less than 1100 So the company is now marketing their vintage pieces, which they no longer make. They're saying it's only worth 1100 Is that what they told you? Do you understand how all this is crazy? Okay, that's my point. Because she's looking at me like, I don't know where you're going, Dr. Lori. <laughs> Basically, this doll is worth somewhere around $800. So the woman who was offering you 700 probably was too low. The company that has manufactured these and has lots of people like you calling them saying what, they're wor what are they worth is inflating the value. Then they're using schemes. I'll call them schemes like, oh, it's the only one with green pants. You know darn well they did not only buy one particular amount of, uh, uh, one particular amount of material for only one pair of green pants. <laughs> You're manufacturing these dolls, guess what? You're buying a lot more corduroy in green than just for one, right? Value on it about $800. It's a nice piece, where do you keep it? Okay, why would you bring it to a doll show? Are you a doll buyer and seller? So what are you doing at the doll show? Showing up with your doll? Like just a participant? Took it to see what the interest was. 
and they're making you offers. Is that a good place for you to understand what your pieces are worth? Where someone has a vested interest in your object. If they have a dog in the hunt, you're not going to get a good deal. You've got to know the value and market it yourself so you can find that collector who is, you know, say you're a big doll collector who really want it for the most money. It's in very nice condition. A closet's a good place to keep it. If you could wrap it in acid-free tissue paper before you put it in the closet, that would be good too. You're welcome. I didn't expect to turn that over and find Gary as the owner. <laughs> How'd you acquire this, Gary? What have we got? Hi, Gary. How's it going? Things are okay? You want a beer? He's buying. <laughs> How'd we acquire this? Nice. Nice. Her eyes are like marbles. They don't move. They don't close and open, close and open. I love her hair. She has hair I used to have. Like in 1986, you know, all the hair with the curls. A lot of hair. Do you think that wig goes with this doll? That wig doesn't go with this doll. That wig goes on a bigger doll. She's all hair. Like lots of it. It's kind of Kim Kardashian-ish without the butt. <laughs> I don't know, Kim Kardashian did a good job for herself because I have just as big a butt as her and I'm not doing as well as she is. <laughs> oh my. It's a nice doll. It's, um, uh, it's bone china, china doll. It's not bisque and it's not uh, porcelain. It dates to about eight, 1905 to 1915 and value on this doll is about $55. What'd you pay at the estate sale? $10, you did better on the other one. They put a new wig on her, wigs are important.